by the beating that he received. But it says it also here in 1 Peter chapter 2. He says here in verse 24, for, for his own, he said, who his own self bear our sins. He bear what? Amen. Our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin, I told y'all the other day, I believe in zombies. You're dead in your sin. You're the walking dead if you're still in sin. You're the walking dead. He said in his own body, he buried our sins on a tree. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. Unto what? Unto righteousness. And I told you before that righteousness have two definitions. Righteousness is being in right standing with God. When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then you become in right standing with God. You're in your proper place. Because outside of that, you're out of place. You're out of place. It says, he who knew no sin became sin for us. That the righteousness of God, that we may become the righteousness of God in him, in him, in Christ Jesus. He became sin for you. Not only did he bear your sins in his body, he became sin for you. That's why God on the cross, when Jesus says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God didn't forsake him, but God turned his back on sin because on the cross, he bore the sins of the world. And God will not be in the presence of sin. And Jesus had to take the blood, the blood, the atonement to the grave. And the Bible says he went down into the deep. He went to hell for us. And he paid the penalty of sin. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. He went to hell for you and for me. So you don't have to go there. Now if you end up there, it's because you chose to go. Because God is not sending anyone to hell. But he sent everyone the way out through his son, Jesus Christ. He didn't send religion. He sent his son. Jesus said, a, a, a body has thou prepared for me. A body. He said, I come in the volume of the book which is spoken of me. I come to do thy will, O Lord. And his will was to go to the cross, to die and to be buried, and then to be raised to be raised on the third day. And now he become the firstborn of the resurrection. And because he was raised, we also who are in Christ shall be raised in like fashion as he was. Because the Bible says in Thessalonians that the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those that live and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. And there will forever be with the Lord. Will forever be with the Lord. That's why he received those stripes. He received those, the, 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 the wounds in his, in his head and in his hand and on his back and, and on his thigh and on his chest and everywhere they could hit him, they hit him. They hit him for you. They hit him for me. With his stripes. He said here once again, verse 24, it says, who his own, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. That righteousness also means to do right. People think, well, it's by grace we're saved through faith and that none of ourselves is a gift of God. Yes, it is by grace you are saved, but the Bible says, shall you continue in sin? So grace may abound. God forbid. People think, well, grace, you know, by God's grace, you know, I'm okay. I'm okay with the man upstairs. No, you're not okay. Because God was talking to the church. He says, he says, if you sin, you become, that's, you become a servant to sin. You become a servant to sin. So it means also to do right. 
Righteousness means to do right. Well, how, how do I do right? It's by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He blew on them. He said, receive. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't do it in your own self. But you got to receive the Holy Ghost and then let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you into all truth, the Bible says. Ring on to you everything that, that, the, that Jesus has said. The word of God is our map, we say in our confession, and the Holy Ghost is our compass. We need to read our map and follow yeah, our compass. Yeah. But we so often want to follow our own way. How I think, how I feel. God never asks you what you think and what you feel. He says, obey. Obey. The first sin was not sexual sin. The first sin wasn't murder. The first sin wasn't, wasn't, wasn't uh, uh, stealing. The first sin was disobedience. Amen. And then the Bible says, if you are a disobedient child, you are in sin. By one man's disobedience, sin came into the world and death by sin. But by one man's obedience, we have eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm still working on this verse 24. We're not through with it yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The latter part of it says, should, li should live unto righteousness by whom's, watch this, by whose what? Stripes. By whose what? Stripes. By whose what? Stripes. By whose what? Stripes. Now I'm convinced. By whose stripes ye are healed. And he says not only are healed, he said ye were healed. In other words, he's already paid for your healing. He's already paid for your deliverance. He's already paid to set you free. All you got to do is receive it today. All you got to do is receive it. Oh, hallelujah. See, the, the Bible lets us know. The Bible lets us know, even though we're in the Father's hands, we still get marred sometimes. You know, if you read, and we don't have to turn there, but if you read in Jeremiah uh, chapter, uh, I believe it's chapter 18, verse 1 through 5, it talks about the potter and the clay. And he says he sent the prophet to go and look at the potter, to look in his window. <laughs> well, y'all have to be here to understand that. Uh, to, uh, he said, you go down to the potter's house and you observe the potter. And the prophet went down and he looked at the, he was observing the potter. And he said, the potter worked the work on the wheel. And as the potter worked the work, the, the, the prophet saw that the, the, the clay that he worked was marred in the potter's hands. It was scarred, it was bruised in the potter's hands. Though it was in the potter's hands, it was marred. It was marred. Come on in, brothers. Come on in. There's seats right over here. It was marred in the potter's hands. It was marred. And the Bible says, but the potter, after he saw that it was marred, that he said he made it again. He made it again. See, while you're in the potter's hands, you've been yeah. scarred. You've been bruised. You have gone through some things sometimes that are unmentionable. So she carried on last night with the other night when she gave her testimony. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't fathom. I couldn't fathom my mom who giving me away, my mom selling me, my mom trading me for drugs or alcohol. I, I said, oh Lord. And, and man, she went through something. Some of you have been abused, sexually abused, morally abused, mentally abused. Some of you have been physically abused, been beat on, been knocked down, been kicked and spit on. But Jesus said, I came for this. I came for this. I suffered so that you don't have to suffer. Yes, you may have experienced it. And you were marred while you're in the Lord's hands. You said, Lord, why am I going through this? Why have I had to suffer this? But you will find out that sometime in life, your misery will become your ministry. That will be the very thing God will use you to minister to other people, to help them be delivered. With his stripes, we are healed. We have to discern the Lord's body. Discerning means get a clear understanding of what took place. 
Get a clear understanding. Don't be confused. Don't be confused. Don't be dismayed. But get a clear understanding of what took place in his body. We see all what Jesus went through. Last scripture and we're going to close. Hallelujah. Go over to Isaiah 53. We're going to go there. Because this is the whole testament about what Jesus endured. This is the prophecy that he was going to have to go through. And it says, even starting at verse 1, it says, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground. He has not found, excuse me, he has not no form, nor comeliness. And, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we did as it were, hid as it were our face from him. He was despised and he was, uh, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs. Surely he has done what? Borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Hallelujah. Here's that verse. Verse 5, are you there? Amen. But he was wounded. He was what? He was wounded for, for our transgressions, for your sins, for your, for your wrongdoing. Jesus was wounded for that. He was bruised for our iniquity, even those hidden things. Iniquity is that inward sin, the things that you keep secret. You might try to keep them secret from man, but God sees them. Yeah. And you can't hide from God. Yeah. Oh, no, don't tell nobody. Don't, don't tell nobody that, that, that what I've done. Oh, I don't Nobody need to know what I've done. Oh, no, no, no. But, but yet you keep doing that. Oh, you ask for forgiveness. But then you go back and do it again. And again. But he says, look, don't do it no more. You are forgiven if you will just repent and turn away from sin. And turn to righteousness, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All like all we like sheep are gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. See, everybody wants to do their own thing. They want to do what's right in their own mind. They say, Well, I, I know what the Bible says, but I think this is right for me. Everybody wanna have their own definition of what right is. There's only one definition, and that's God's definition. Because God said, let him be true, and every man be a liar. Amen. Amen. He said, sanctify us, cleanse us, wash us, make us holy through thy truth. What is truth? Thy word is truth. See, when you line up with the word of God, you line up with Jesus. Because Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, and the same was in the beginning with God. And that's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, look what it says here. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquities and sin of us all. See, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 59, you don't have to turn there, it's there. I'm in the book, baby. I'm in the book. He says, it's our iniquities that separate us from God. See, when you, 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 you're wondering, God, where are you? Where are you? I don't see you. I don't feel you. you you're you're kind of like Thomas. Unless I put my finger in his, in his hand, and my hand in his side, I won't believe. We hid our face. And it says, and we turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of how many? All. Of us all. 
of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the, the shearer he is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation? For we were, for he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked. I told you he went to hell for you. He made his grave. But Jesus, when he died, the Bible says he took captivity captive. He took captivity captive. And see, and that which you are afraid of, you are afraid of death, well, he showed you that, that you don't have to do worry about death anymore because you shall live because he lives. He's the firstborn of the resurrection. And so the Bible says in the book of uh, 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 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says, he says, oh, grave, where is thy sting? No, oh death, where is thy victory? Where is it? Because they have none. Because Jesus conquered and he overcame. Verse 9, you still in Isaiah 53? And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord. Watch this, watch this. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased the Lord. Why did it please God to bruise his son? The Bible says that Jesus Christ endured the cross, despising the chain for the hope, for the glory that was on the other side. You know what was on the other side? You, me, and everyone here. For that glory of the resurrection, not only his resurrection, but the resurrection of men, women, boys, and girls who will believe. Who will believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. For he has put on him to grieve. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he was the final sacrifice for sin. No more killing bulls and goats and lambs. But Jesus was the final sacrifice. He was that sacrifice. Hallelujah. He, and he shall see his seed. Who shall see? God shall see his seed. His seed is Jesus, the son of the almost high. And he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Amen. See, the Bible says it's God's good pleasure to give you and me the kingdom. The kingdom of God was made for you and me out of God's own good pleasure. Hallelujah. Jesus told Thomas, Thomas, put your finger in my hand. Behold my hands. Take your hand and thrust it in my side. And be not faithless, but believe. As we discern the Lord's body, as we discern the Lord's body, not faithless, but believe. See, some of us here, we got to repent. Sometimes, you know, uh, we can think, well, what I have to repent for, I like Sister carry on's testimony. She thought, I don't have to repent. I do nothing. And she realized she had hatred in her heart. She had unforgiveness in her heart because she had been done wrong. She had been abandoned. She had no love in her heart. She, saw, she went to church sometime, 
but she wasn't saved. But then when she came to the altar and repented, Jesus Christ came into her life, became her Lord and her Savior. Because if Jesus Christ is not Lord, he is not Savior. Keep wanting to do it your own way. In other words, you're your own Lord. You're your own master. You said, Lord, I don't have to obey you. I do it my way. I do it my way. Yeah, I, I, I'm like Burger King. I have it my way. Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, special orders, don't upset us. Have it your way. No, it's not Burger King. It's not Burger King. And we're not Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. No, we're not Frank Sinatra. You don't do it your way, but you surrender to his will. Because if you're not surrendered, you're not safe. Hell is your home. Hell is your home. You say, well, brother, I don't believe that. Well, then you don't believe the Bible. The Bible is true. See, you skipped that part when it said that. Some people skip that part. They say, I don't want to read that part. I want to read the part only about grace. Only about grace. By grace am I saved. Through faith and that not of myself is a gift of God. Yeah, by grace you are saved, but by God's grace you are kept if you're obedient. If you're obedient. This is the time for you to be obedient today. If you have sin in your life and you have not confessed your sin to God, this is the time. God has made this day, this morning, so that you can be a part of the Bible called the first resurrection. When Jesus comes back for the church, he's coming back for his body Amen. and his body alone. The devil's kids, he's going to leave here. And if you're a church goer, but yet you were faithless, he's leaving you too. This type but is right. And people don't like to hear that. They want to hear, go, well, God loves everybody and God's not sending nobody to hell. He's not. you chosen hell. The, but you know, the, the, I said I was going to mention this. Pastor mentioned, the evangelist Samuel mentioned the door. He mentioned the door. Jesus is standing right now at the door of your heart and he's knocking. And he's asking you to let him in and to let him be Lord. But he also said in the Gospels in John chapter 10, he says, I am the door. John chapter 10 is there. He says, I am the door. He said, and my sheep, they hear me and they follow me. Yes, yes. Are you his sheep? Yes. Or are you the long wolf? Are you the long wolf? Want to do it your own way? You don't want to listen to God. He said, my sheep follow me. They hear my voice and they follow me. And he said, if you come in through any other way other than through me, you're a thief and a robber. You're a liar and the truth is not in you. He's the door. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no man come to the Father but by him. And if you're here today and you say, I don't know Jesus as my Lord, as my Savior. I, I've never accepted him. I've never asked him to come into my life. And I've never surrendered. This is your time. This is your time to surrender to the Lord right now. Don't hesitate. Don't delay. Don't delay. Because he's standing there waiting for you to open up the door and let him in. Because if you don't open it, he's not kicking it down. He's not barging in. And if you're here today and you say, Pastor Will, I have accepted Jesus Christ at one time in my life. But I have turned away from the Lord and I willfully gone out into a lifestyle of sin. And I know I'm wrong. And I know according to the word of God that, 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 that I need to be cleansed and I need to be washed and, and I need to be born again. I need to come back. Jesus said to his disciples, except you repent, you shall likewise perish. In the book of Revelations chapter 2, he told the church, he says, he says, look here. He says, I know your works and I know that, that you do good and those people who say they're apostles and are not, you, you put them aside. He says, but I got something against you. He said, because you have left your first love. And then he said, now repent. 
do what? Repent. What do repent mean? It's to stop right where you are. Stop the life of sin and turn towards God and come to Jesus and give your life to him and surrender. Don't be proud because the Bible says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. But if you're obedient, you shall never fall. You shall never fall. This is your time. He is risen. He lived. He died. And he rose again. So you and I can live. And live with him eternally. Forevermore. Will you accept him today? Will you accept him? If you're here today and you got sickness in your body. You got sickness in your body. And you haven't asked the Lord to heal you. Or if you have asked the Lord, but yet you haven't received the manifestations, believe by faith. Hallelujah. Believe by, because by his stripes, you are healed. You were healed. Hallelujah. It's done. Yes. Receive it right now. Hallelujah. Some people are still walking in what they have. Because they haven't discerned the Lord's body. We're getting ready to do communion. And I'm going to read the scriptures for communion right along with this message. We're getting ready to do communion. And you have to discern the Lord's body. Because if you don't discern the Lord's body, you're going to be weak and sickly. And you may just fall asleep. And I don't mean resting. I mean dead, right where you are. You have to discern the Lord's body. And when we discern the Lord's body, we know that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our transgressions. He was wounded for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Some are still sick because they ask not. The Bible says you have not. In the book of James, you have not because you ask not. And when you do ask, you ask amiss to consume it upon your own lust. The Bible says in the book of James, if there be any sick among you, call for the elders of the church and they will anoint you with oil and lay hands on you. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Shall save the sick. Now I'm going to give you a scripture reference and then we're not going to turn there. But also in the book of Luke chapter 5. You'll see where Jesus was preaching in a house. And there's something funny about this because you don't see nothing about the sermon he preached. But you see about the faith of the men that came in the door. See in the Bible says, matter of fact, I'm going to turn there. Turn to Luke chapter 5. I just have to turn there. The Holy Spirit is telling me to turn there. And, and we got time. We got time. It's only 825. Luke chapter 5. Are you there? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 17. Watch this. And it came to pass. On a certain day, as he was teaching, he was doing what? Teaching. teaching. That there were Pharisees and doctors of the law, religious people, preachers, pastors, Pharisees, priests. They came to hear him too. But they came to hear him with skeptical ears, not with faith. Because why do I know that? Watch what it says. The Pharisees and doctors and, uh, and sitteth by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and of Judah, Judea and Jerusalem. And watch this. And the next three words, and it says, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of the Lord is present right now to heal you. First, the heal of sin. Because all of those hypocrites were full of hypocrisy and sin. 
And he was there to heal them. Not a physical sickness that they had, but heal them of sin. But he also came to heal. The power of the Lord was there to heal from physical sickness too. Look with me at verse 18. And it says, and behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with the palsy. In other words, paralyzed with the palsy. And they sought means to bring him in. Are you seeking to come in to Jesus? Are you seeking to find the master? Are you seeking to get to him, to get close to him? And to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let down through the tile, through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. They got the man to Jesus. Who have you brought to Jesus today? Are you bringing people to 